Hello everyone, this video will give you the 10 most essential beginner tips. I'm going to skip the YouTube fluff, here's the first tip. Many players struggle to consistently dash strike, and rebinding your buttons makes the button combo far easier. I highly recommend adjusting all the bindings to your personal preference, though dash is the most important. With default bindings, dash and your primary offensive options are all on the face buttons. I highly recommend you rebind dash to a shoulder button. Which button doesn't matter as long as you can easily access it and attack at the same time, because... Dash strikes are often preferable to regular attacks, or at worst, complement attacks. Take Sword, for example. If you haven't seen or played much yet, you might be using the sword something like this. Note the DPS in the bottom left corner. It's coming from a mod, your game won't have it, but it's incredibly helpful to us here. I'll now show you the optimal attack sequence for Sword. There's a substantial difference, right? Doing dash strike, dash strike special, and then repeating is sword's best damage rotation. Dash strikes are always solid in the DPS department, and also allow you to easily maneuver behind or away from foes to gain the upper hand. Additionally, the majority of effects that affect your attack will also affect your dash strike, though a few do not. Finally, it's important to note that dash strikes strip your dash of all iframes. Normal dashes allow you to dash through enemy attacks, projectiles, and traps, but dash striking early in the dash won't work. Dash striking after avoiding the attack will work, though. You start Hades with a sword, with a bow available to unlock. Shield and spear are next, and after unlocking these four weapons, the fists become available. Finally, you'll be able to unlock the rail. I'd highly recommend you unlock and try out all the weapons, even if you already think you have a favorite. Weapons don't become stronger the harder they are to unlock. Rail is not superior to sword. All the weapons are actually balanced incredibly well. You'll see many players loving and hating each and every weapon based on their favorite playstyles. The sword is a close-range weapon with decent utility in the special. It's probably the most basic weapon overall, which makes sense as it the first to unlock. Use the damage rotation shown previously for optimal DPS. You can also dash immediately after specialing to become more mobile. Bow is also very simple, it's the default ranged choice. Dash strikes allow you to reposition and retreat safely while dealing strong DPS. However, you need to get a hang of the perfect shot timing to do well with the weapon. Note that the dash strike timing is different from the normal attack. I have a guide here and plan on making more guides on the other weapons soon. Subscribe to keep up to date if you're interested. Shield is the most offensive weapon. It allows you to block damage from the front while charging a bull rush. Its offensive capability are a little lower than other weapons to compensate for this ability, however. Blocking allows you to study the attack patterns of enemies, but be wary of using it as a crutch, because you need to learn how to dodge for every other weapon. Spear is a safe mid-range weapon. You can stay quite far away from enemies while attacking and dash wrecking them. Similar to shield, spear can struggle with damage to compensate for the safety. The special does very low damage, but is well suited to boons like Ares and Zeus. Fists are exceptional at close quarters combat, but lack any ranged option. When using attacks, make sure to dash before finishing your 5-hit attack chain to avoid any downtime in attacking. The dash upper, performed like a dash strike but with a special button instead, benefits from special bonuses and dash strike bonuses. Rail is the other ranged weapon but is overall harder to use than bow. The attack doesn't flinch enemies at all, which takes some getting used to. The special uses a lobbing mechanic similar to Dionysus's cast, which isn't always easy to use due to the lobbing time. It can also unexpectedly bounce off chamber geometry. Once mastered, however, rail can be incredibly powerful. Becoming comfortable with all the weapons, or most of them at least, will help you understand the game far better than just using a single weapon would. One a random weapon each run will have Dark Thirst on it, which increases all darkness gains by 20%. Many players use Dark Thirst to help them use all weapons more equally. Another huge difference between weapons is the type of builds that work well on them. For example, Zeus' attack is fantastic on rail but useless on bow. Builds are very relevant in Hades because you can force gods to appear by equipping their keepsakes. I'll be describing broad archetypes rather than specific builds. That topic is far too deep to entirely cover here. At a macro level, there are three archetypes. Damage percent, non-damage percent, and cast. Interesting names, I know, but hear me out here. Damage percent and non-damage percent archetypes both either use attack or special as their primary damage. Cast, of course, uses cast. Those builds aren't really worthwhile until you get later in the game. I'll cover them at some future point. For now, don't worry too much about them. Most attack and special boons give you a damage percent increase to the base damage. These all have their own merit. Aphrodite has the highest values and weak, Athena can deflect, Demeter has chill, Poseidon has knockback, and Artemis has crit. Despite Having the lowest damage percent values, Artemis is actually always the strongest raw DPS choice of these. Critical hits in many games have a 1.5 times or 2 times modifier. Hades has 3 times, and crits are multiplicative with everything else. However, as previously listed, each other option does have advantages. Next, there are many moves that prefer non damage percent boons. Zeus, Ares, and Dionysus don't care about the base damage of the move, so they are the obvious choice here. Zeus and Ares don't benefit from multiple immediate applications, so shotgunning bow special is best for Dionysus, though it prefers Zeus or Ares at range. Shield and 
and Spear Special are both not really the main damage sources, and thus favor Ares' slow startup. Fist and Rail Attack both love Zeus. These are the loose archetypes. As you can see, the best option varies based on what kind of move you want to use most, and there are theoretical best builds for them. For example, while a Fist Attack synergizes well with Zeus, going Ares and aiming to get the Merciful End duo boon is stronger if you can manage it. Going this deep into build theory is beyond the scope of this video, however. To be able to get the build you want, you need to understand core boons. Core boons are visible on the left, attack, special, cast, and dash. Despite being displayed in the same area, calls are not considered core. If you are missing at least one core boon, any boon reward is guaranteed to offer at least one core boon, though it might be a trade. If you don't have any core boons, you are guaranteed to see three core boons. In practice, this means that filling your core boons gives you a better chance of seeing the boons you really want, as there is an extra slot your desired boon can generate in. So, instead of taking non-core tier 1 boons, it is sometimes better to take core boons, even if you rarely use them. This doesn't mean it's the best choice every time, of course, but now that you know about this mechanic you will be able to experiment and decide for yourself what boon is best. There are also other categories of boons, for example god curses that have unique generation rules. If you are interested in learning more about this topic or would like it explained in the text format, please check out the link in the description below. Another useful piece of information regarding boons is the god pool. Once you have received boons from four gods, you won't naturally see any other gods offered. Each god you've taken a boon from joins your god pool. Note that selling the boons you've received from a certain god doesn't remove them from the pool. Additionally, Hermes and Chaos do not count toward the god pool at all. Before your god pool is full, each boon reward you generate has a 25% chance to be a god you've already encountered, and the remaining percentage is the chance of seeing a new god, which is divided between all of them. You can force more than four gods to show up by using their keepsakes, but it generally isn't recommended as this reduces is the chance of seeing any god you want from 25-20%. to 20%. Keeping in mind how many gods you have in your god pool is important to ensure your build turns out the way you want. No matter how carefully you plan a build, sometimes chaos will, temporarily, throw a wrench in your plans. Chaos can only be accessed through gates found on the floor of a chamber and by paying the health cost. You'll then be offered a choice of boon and curse combos. Some boons are fantastic, but some curses are really bad. Make sure you check both parts before selecting a combo. After the specified number of encounters, the curse will morph into the boon. Much like Chaos, Hermes is a unique and powerful god in Hades that you need to understand. You typically only encounter him twice a run. Hermes has some of the most powerful boons in the game with strong movement options like Greatest Reflex and Hyper Sprint, as well as damage mitigation from Greater Evasion and Second Wind, and other useful boons like Rush Delivery that improve DPS. To counteract these strong boons, Hermes has lower rarity chances than all other gods, meaning you are less likely to see rare and epic boons. This is particularly notable with his legendaries. Another powerful reward you usually only see two of is Daedalus Hammers. Hammers directly modify your weapon in a usually meaningful way, like transforming a move, increasing damage, or adding some additional feature. The hammers vary for each weapon, though there are some common themes. For example, flurry hammers make your primary attack faster, and breaching hammers increase your attack damage against armor. Understanding the uses of each weapon's Daedalus Hammers and which ones you personally prefer is incredibly important in Hades. Throughout your runs in Hades, you will get various chamber rewards. These are broken up into two main categories. Gold Laurel rewards go away when you return to the House of Hades, while Blue Laurel rewards persist and can be used to give you permanent upgrades. These rewards are called metacurrencies. You will earn enough metacurrency as you progress through the game to unlock everything, so at this stage of the game, all that's important is what you prioritize. Here's what I would recommend you focus on first. Your first 2-3 to three nectars are very important to give to Skelly and gods. Keys to unlock weapons in mirror modules. Just try and keep pace with your darkness on the mirror and devote the rest of your keys to unlocking weapons until you have them all. Darkness to upgrade the mirror. There's a link in the description that tells you how I prioritize darkness in the mirror, but in general, do what you want. Gemstones for contractor upgrades. The Faded List of Minor Prophecies is a prerequisite requisite for many contractor upgrades in addition to giving you meta currency upon completion of a prophecy. Purified and holy fountains help you get further in a run, as does the keepsake cabinet. Lesser plunder helps you get more meta currency out of a run. I plan on doing a more in-depth guide on meta currency soon. If you're interested, don't forget to ring the bell to be notified of my uploads. If you have any questions about this video or the game in general, please comment down below. Thank you for watching and have a fantastic day.